Hello everyone, I'm Siru. In this video, I introduce ABS Biopharma trial history with Moderna. In this video, I introduce about ABS Biopharma overview, trial of outlook, opinion of Siru. I will first introduce myself. Siru is just one of member. On YouTube, I mainly make video of analysis of individual US stocks and financial results. I'm not good at English. So the English video is a big challenge for me. If you feel this video good, please subscribe to this channel. Attention! This video is an overview and primary document and detail are applied on not platform. YouTube transmission of Abdus Biopharma information is illegal. Please note that some cases are included. First, I introduce Abdus Biopharma overview. Abdus has been conducting research on RNA for many years and has obtained many patents since the 2000s. However, there are no pharmaceuticals currently being sold, mostly due to licensed income from patents. Currently, the company is developing a drug for the treatment of hepatitis B. The company continues to lose money. Please understand that Abbas is not a stable company and was repeatedly raised funds. Before we get into the description of the trial, let me explain a few assumptions. I began with the relationship between Abdus and Aquitas. Aquitas was founded by retired doctors Abdus. The reason for independence is a disagreement over a change in Abdus research line. Also, the doctor became independent. The patent obtained during their service was in the name of Abdus. Aquitas borrowed Abdus patent for development. At one point, Aquitas offered the license to Moderna. However, this license offer was a breach of contract with Abdus. This was because Abdus was no sub-lease agreement. As a result of Abdus pointing out the provision against subletting, Aquitas sued Abdus. However, Aquitas unable to win, eventually offered to settle and return to the license. Then it is Moderna that is in trouble. Moderna suddenly could no longer use the patent it was using via Aquitas. Moderna approached Abdus about a license agreement, but was stabbed because it was more expensive than ever. As a result, Moderna filed suit against Abdus, claiming that the patent was in a general view and that it was wrong for Abdus to have a monopoly. The trial was filed in 2019, but at the time, Moderna presumably believed that there were currently no prospects for pharmaceuticals and that if they lost the case, they could just commercialize the product for the patent expires. However, a pandemic will occur in 2020 and Moderna will go on to develop a vaccine. While the probability of success was considered low, the drug is successfully produced in a short period of time. It is in part from later documents that the Abdus patent technology was used at this time. As a result of different events than expected, Moderna could not wait for the patent to expire and decide to go ahead with pharmaceutical products. In July 2020, a ruling will be issued in favor of Abdus. In this situation, Abdus confirmed the patent infringement from the data describing the phase 1 clinical trial data of the bike packs in Moderna around the fall of 2020. Abdus will try negotiation a license agreement against patent infringement. Once at the negotiation table, Moderna refused to sign a costly license agreement and stated that it was not infringement since the phase 2 clinical trial because of change in technology. This is not a realistic statement. Supplemental information on Abdus technology, which Moderna is pleased to have infringed. The patent that is in dispute with Moderna is a technology related to the ratio of LNP production. For a long time, mRNA was not successfully used in pharmaceutical because it is usually not allowed to enter cell by itself. However, by being packaged with LNP, it can be successfully used in pharmaceuticals. Abdus holds the patent on this LNP technology. At the conclusion of the first trial, Moderna lost this case against Abdus. Moderna itself didn't go there with clear evidence, so the results are in order. The next point of contention is that Moderna was commercializing using technology that it wished to recent. 
Abdus was been recommending negotiation for a license agreement since the fall of 2020. But the second round of negotiation did not take place until the beginning of 2022. As a result, the plaintiff were replaced and Abdus filed suit against Moderna on February 28, 2022, regarding the license agreement. Matter is about patent infringement and payment of a license fee for the use of a patent owned by the company in Spikebox. As for these lawsuits, it begins with the same sense as before the lawsuits. Abdus demands that it pays the license fee for the malicious violation of its patent. Moderna takes a position that it was not violate the patent and therefore does not have to pay. In May 2022, Moderna will change the direction of its statements. While still not providing evidence of non-compliance, will argue for Article 1498. Section 49 is an old US law enacted during World War I. Section 1498 allows a company that was infringed a patent to seek compensation from the government if a product made for the government violates the patent during one time or other time of government's crisis. Moderators argue it that Spikebox was developed with a giant from the US government during a government crisis, a pandemic and therefore is a production for the US government. Therefore, Abdus is warned to sue Moderna and ask that it be addressed to the government. While citing grant for Moderna's claim was visible, there were many holds. Abdus pointed out that the drug is being provided to foreign countries and that in the past case, pharmaceuticals were considered of label for civilian donation. Abdus made those points and argued that they were still standing for time. The court informed Moderna six months later that it couldn't make an adaptive judgment with Moderna's current evidence. In response to the failure to adapt Article 1498, Moderna will enter the discovery phase, set the first evidentiary meeting for February 16, 2023, and request a longer overlay schedule. The incident will occur on February 15. The day before the meeting, the US Department of Defense suddenly slight strikes us. The Pentagon commented that it was certain that it was entered into a contract with Moderna, so it would allow the Section 1498 adoption. The judge will comment sternly on this matter at a late day on this matter. It is an overreach for the Pentagon to decide on its own interpretation of the law. Moderna was being uncovered updates without disclosing evidence. Court mandated that Moderna disclose all evidence notwithstanding Section 1498. As of May 2023, the discovery of Abdus and Moderna under the court order is proceeding and of travel as a schedule. Also, there is a hold on Article 1498. The case is basically proceeding in favor of Abdus. The trial is scheduled to be settled in the second half of next year. There is a possibility of an early settlement. Before we get to the target price, I talk about Abdus and the plaintiffs. Abdus is not the only plaintiff. Zelevant is also present. Zelevant is joint venture with Abdus and Royvant. Zelevant is the current holder of the patent that is currently being contested. Royvant is also a major shareholder in Abdus and Zelevant, holding 25% of Abdus share and 48% of Genevant shares. If they prevail in this trial, the proceeds go to Genevant. The proceeds will then be allocated to Abdus as licensing revenue after court costs are deducted. The allocation is set at 50% of the licensing revenue or a low single digit percentage of the sales of the infringing product. This is a daily chart of Abdus since 2020. The past two times Abdus was won a lawsuit, it was reacted significantly. However, the sharp price was born due to the fact that the company was yet to generate direct income and the prolongation of the trial. This section describes the target price. This calculation is both approximate and understated. First, Modern's product sales for fiscal year 21 and 22 are $36.1 billion. Since most of this is described as spice bucks, we will use it as the subject of our calculations. 
In addition, Spikeback's contract sales for fiscal year 23 were explained as $5 billion in the previous year's financial results. This means that the revenue over the three years is $41.1 billion. The revenue assumption going to ABS is low single digit percent of sales or 20% of license revenue. Estimate range from 822 million to 2055 million. This assumes 22 2% of spike packs of sales, assuming 3% in this case. I calculate a minimum target price of $8.5 with a PB ratio of 1. There are many ways to calculate the theoretical stock price, such as our acquisition percentage and the PB ratio but we have used the compensation figure. I wouldn't be surprised if the result is in the 10 of dollars. The following is in explanation of the most recent outlook. First, I expect no major information disclosure in the near term. Therefore, I expect the stock price turn to move in tandem with the index. When will it be settled? It's always uncertain, and is adapted in the note article whenever news is released. There is a possibility of an early settlement, or it may not be settled until late next year. Also, if there is a schedule change, the situation will change, so I can never say for sure. Conclusion The trial with Moderna continues to favor of others. I consider that the stock price will not reflect this until after the trial, so it will rise within the next year. I currently expect at least a threefold upside, but there is a good chance that different results will be archived depending on capital inclusion, the stock price environment, and their factors. Please keep in mind the transition may be difficult for some time to come. Thank you for watching to the end. If you found this video including useful, please subscribe to our channel and click the like button. That's all for now. See you soon.